continue our MCTV Sports coverage of the Battle of the Strip. It's the 54th annual and checking the halftime scoreboard. It's 26 to 20, a high scoring affair here on Jim Cox Field. The Mustangs on top of the Vikings. And let's do a quick cappuccino running back Mustang player, Justin Ewing update. 26 carries for 145 yards, three touchdowns, and his magic number is down to 152. Still trying to break Onan Reyes's CCS single season rushing record that was set back in 1997. The interesting thing, Steve, is that Reyes did it in 12 games, and if Ewing does it today, he'll do it in only 10 games. Well, again, that's at 7.8 yards per carry that he's averaging this year, which is so tremendous. Again, I was doing some research and compared him to uh, some top flight NFL running backs. And again, the 7.8 yards per carry eclipses the 5.7 yards per carry for Adrian Peterson. So I'm just saying, he's a quality running back and level for level, what we're seeing is someone very special and unique, rising to a level of competition very exciting to see you know also steve if for some reason ewing does not do it today he will have another opportunity to break the ccs record next week in the ccs playoffs because cap has already qualified for postseason play by winning the pal lake division championship if the mustangs were to win next week ewing would have another chance so steve even if the six foot 195 pound senior doesn't get it today he'll likely get it coming up soon yeah you know and they get it and, and uh if i bet if you were to ask him if he didn't get the record today and they won the game, uh, that he would be just as happy, if not happier, knowing that he'd been such a key part of it. Uh, team trust him, and he always comes through. It's going to be an exciting second half. Very well put. Beglitsoff with the kickoff for the Vikings. We're underway in the third quarter. A deep kick taken at the eight-yard line and is taken there by Cappuccino returner Chris Costa over the right side. He's still on his feet and finally brought down way over on the right sideline by special Austin teamer Miyamoto. for the Vikings, Austin Miyamoto. And it's going to be cap ball with the 26-20 lead here to start the third quarter. So the Mustangs with the ball and a couple of factoids uh, also about Ewing as we dig deep into our notes. The longest TD run of the season for Justin is 82 yards. You mentioned is 7.8 yards per carry. How about 283 yards per game? Well, you know, again, <laughs> an outstanding, a standard that he set for himself, which it's just that he's so involved in their offensive package. He is the man at Cappuccino in terms of football. From the tailback position, they don't even look at Ewing, and Dowie's going deep. He has a man, and he's well defended, but leaping and making a spectacular catch was Devon Lorenzini. So when everybody's talking about Ewing, including you and I, Steve, they say, you know what, we can go Dawe to Lorenzini and get some big yardage here. Coach Adam Heinem and I were in contact before the game, and he mentioned that they'd like to take uh, 10 to 12 shots down the field per game. He said they have a lot of confidence in their fade ball, which you just saw on display on that play. They like also like the slant and the curl. Hand off to Ewing up the middle, and he goes right behind their big center and he's able to get forward for a few yards and serious Collins who we just talked about earlier making a nice block and you have some notes on the cap offensive line because Ewing can't do it all himself. That's right in another, in another uh, kind of communication we talked with Adam Hyman he was talking about serious calling George Fafita Julian Fang right guard Royal Ale and right tackle Brandon Loria uh, as the key players there in the offense for Cappuccino. And he also talked about the tight end, Jack, Zach uh, Cotts, and uh, mentioned that they are the ones that are, are central to Ewing having such a great year. We have to mention those linemen because, you know, their, their names don't come up. We've been talking Ball about start. Ewing offense. a great deal. Know that these guys on the offensive line take pride in, in making holes for him and that they'll share in his record if he does achieve it. And well, they should. And if Ewing was getting paid, I'm sure he'd be taking them all out to dinner. Uh, I'd imagine so. <laughs> Maybe once he uh, hits the big time, if he continues on with his career. Here, Dawe on second and 11 is going to throw another deep ball. This time over the right side, and it's caught. Out of bounds after the catch. Let's see if they 
will allow the reception and there's a few officials trying to get together and no official was really on top of that play they still haven't decided whether they're going to allow it or not and it looks like they are going to so they got together and talked about it that's going to be a huge game it was they again another one of those shots we saw two or three shots uh, in the first half, and, and uh, they weren't making as many of those connections. And all of a sudden now, two big pass plays in this particular drive responsible for most of the yardage. One of the things I've noticed is that the offensive line also protects the passer very well. He's been able to stay on his feet. That is the Cappuccino quarterback on some of these long throws. That was a 29-yard reception. Here's Ewing, starts it over the right and heads back towards the middle, and he's still on his feet. The whistle blew, and it may have blown prematurely. And when you're an umpire back in the heat of battle, if Ewing appears as he's going to go down, you better hold that whistle until you're sure the knee hits because that time, he kept on going. He did, and you saw there that he is that relentless type of runner, and he broke those tackles there in the line. Uh, I guess they blew the play dead, which is why they brought it back um, outside of the end zone. It's going to go for a gain of five for the senior running back as he inches closer to the magic number, which is now at 144 yards. And Ewing over the left side is tripped up at the line by a pair of Mills defenders, Jamie Alfaro, along with Anthony Vozaitis. And he's going to pick up maybe five or six more. That's good enough for a Mustang first down. They're looking at first and goal from the eight. Well, they like that counter play, does Cappuccino, and they keep running it downhill with Ewing, and they keep keep picking up chunks and gashes of five yards at least per play. From the tailback spot, fake to Ewing, pass over the right side, it's caught, touchdown, Cappuccino. Eight yards. Outstanding, it looks like they got their big tight end involved. It's hard to pick up the Cappuccino numbers with that gold on white, but I think it's the tight end. No, no, it's 22, is it? And that's the one player we don't have a name and a number for, and I believe the public address doesn't have a name and a number for that one. Also on the fumbled snap on the extra point attempt, and it's going to go for a loss. Beglitzov broke through the line, and that's going to be no good. And another cap injured player. It was the holder, and that was Payadawe, the quarterback, something cap certainly doesn't want as an injury nobody wants that anyways as they head to the ccs next week regardless of the outcome of this game and so we're, we're hoping to get a number so we can give that young man some credit he's already made two catches so far number 22 of cappuccino having an outstanding game i mean he was, he's open there on the play action again so many people playing and if you've got to play ewing because if you don't if you don't gang tackle in that and when he's running the ball um then He's going to get extra yardage on you, and so they take advantage of the key. Uh, there's no linebackers behind that pass and essentially hit the wide-open tight end. Outstanding play design and really well executed uh, by the Cappuccino offense. So the five touchdowns so far for Cappuccino, one was by Pellegrini on a 25-yard run. Ewing's got three of them, a four-yard run, a three-yard run, and a 20-yard run. And then number 22 with that eight-yard reception. Dawe on the afternoon is 7 of 10 for 104 yards. And the kickoff is taken by Jeffrey inside the 10. Jeffrey breaks it up the middle. He could be gone at the 50. Jeffrey at the 40, at the 30. Jeffrey down to the 10. Jeffrey towards the goal line. And he is just brought down inside the five, down at the three. But there goes Antonio Jeffrey with an 89-yard kickoff return. Antonio Jeffrey is slicing and dicing. We've got to check his all-purpose yards today. From the line of scrimmage as a running back, he's got to be close to 80, 85 yards rushing, but on kickoff returns alone, he's got to be well over 150 yards. That was an 89-yarder, and his previous return on a kickoff was about 60-some. He's having an outstanding day in terms of all-purpose yardage. Puts uh, Mills in great position. Yeah, and only on the ground. He's got eight carries for 28 yards, and that time he's in for the touchdown. I believe that may have been Jeffries again. Let's double check. Oh, might have been Himura. They gave it to the fullback. It was the fullback. You're correct. Joey Himura. It was Himura on the on the on the fullback dive. I mean, 
It, you know, Jeffries with the with the burst on the kick return, put him on the doorstep. Yamira finished off the one yard drive. Outstanding! What a what a dynamic game we're seeing here. 32-26 with the PAT coming. Baglitsov kick is good under the hold of Josh Fed, and now it's a five-point game. We still got plenty of football left here in the third quarter with 9.07 remaining, and we have seen 59 points put up on the board. <laughs> this is like a Pac-12 matchup. It is really, yeah, with this USC Oregon, what the heck's going on out here? <laughs> These kids are playing well. Now, if, now, if you love defensive matchups and you, you know, you, you're want to see that you're you're at the wrong game but these kids are playing well and it takes all three phases of the game i mean jeffries with his two burst on kick returns has have has really set mills up in great position they've taken advantage of that put points on the board uh, cappuccino's trying to squib it down the middle and trying to make it difficult to return but it's just kind of ending up in the hands of jeffries who is doing the rest and uh they're gonna have to try to figure a way to squeeze the field on cappuccino's kickoff coverage they're going to score more points, but they're going to have to do a better job tackling on special teams uh, today and in the playoffs. Beglitsov going to kick, and they keep it over the right side, and it's taken by Devon Lorenzini, and Lorenzini returns it about 12 yards up past the 30, spotted at near the 34-yard line. Decent field goal position or field position, if you will, for the Mustangs. This, were, uh, go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry to cut you off. This will be uh, a situation of whether or not each of these teams can stay 100%. Mills, in particular, with less guys on the sideline. As this goes through the third quarter and early fourth, will Mills be able to continue to bring the same level of commitment physically, or will they wear down? Uh, it's a tight game, five points. Back onto the field is the Mustangs and Justin Ewing. His magic number is now at 138 yards. Here's a pitch out to Justin over the right side. He's heading off the edge and trying to get around, and he does. He's able to get first down yardage and more. Finally knocked out of bounds over there near the right sideline, just at and beyond the yard stick, and that'll move the chains. The Mustangs and Ewing pick up 10 more, his magic number down to 128. He makes the he makes the line the gain there on that 12 or 13 yard run. The Mills defender tried to take him out low and make the tackle because he is so powerful. And Ewing just let him kind of skip by and continued picking up yardage and rambling down the field. Nice run. 30 carries for 169 yards for Ewing. Here he comes now over the left side and he's hit hard a couple times by a few Mills defenders. Himuro was in there along with Beglitz off. That's going to go for a gain of. Four, bring up second and six, magic number now at 124 yards. He's over 170 on the afternoon. Seeing something special here, Kenny. This could be a record-breaking performance for the senior tailback. Here he comes again over the left side. He breaks through the line. He's up rushing near the 45 of Mills and brought down near the 44-yard line. He'll pick up another chunk a little five yard gain let's drop that magic number down to 119. we talked to ewing once again or we also got a quote earlier about the record and ewing said quote it would be good to have he went on to say a ccs record would immortalize us it would be icing on the cake here's a run over the right side was that the man himself again, yes it was, and he's up near the first down marker, brought down by Brian Numb. And you know, some of these Mills players are gonna remember this game, they're gonna say, hey, I tackled that guy. That's it, that's it, <laughs> they're, they're getting posterized right now. You know, we were in an interesting way, you know, I, I looked at some some uh, footage before the game with uh, with uh, Randy Sahai, and we were there, uh, there's a lot of pride in this cappuccino team talking about the fact that they've won four championships talking about this group of players that have been together since their frost off days they count that they've won four league championships in the four years that the group has been together and they take a great deal of pride in that this group is executing they have an identity and certainly we keep talking about justin ewing but again it does count on all the whole team 
to make the plays. Doing really fantastic. A very, very special thanks go out to Mr. Pickle Sandwich Shop in Millbrae. They have provided a hungry MCTV crew with sandwiches and other good eats, which is important because sometimes these games can go on for a while and TV folks get hungry. Mr. Pickles offers a large selection of sandwiches, including many that you can find only at Mr. Pickles. You can sample them for yourself by visiting their shop at 405 Broadway in downtown Millbrae. They also accept phone-in and takeout orders. You can call them at 697-1980. And be sure to tell them that MCTV sent you. And I saw you munching on one of the sandwiches at halftime, Steve. I got to tell you, uh, that's, that's keeping me going, keeping me energized. It was delicious, and they do a fine job there. Second and one. I'm looking forward to my sandwich after the game. But right now, I'm enjoying this one. 32-27, 7.21 left to go here. In the third quarter, Mustangs trying to get that first down and more, and they give it to their star, their superstar, Justin Ewing, and he's got it with ease. He's going to pick up some more. If this, if they ran a simple power play over to the right. This would be another good time with the wide, wide side of the field over here to the left if they went power right and did some kind of reverse. Uh, you could take advantage of a wide open side of the field, which seems to be there against Mills. Again, they have to key on Ewing because of his prowess moving the ball. Let's see what happens. From the 30 of the Vikings, now threatening, leading by five, wanting to add to it. There's a quick swing pass over to that man, number 22. Don't have his name yet. He is not on the roster, and we had emailed Coach Hyman earlier and asked him if there were any roster changes, but he had been besieged by the media throughout the peninsula and beyond because his superstar Ewing is starting to make national headlines. I mean, at some point, he's got to focus on his team and then his family. And he can't answer all the emails and phone calls. And we were probably just another fly on the wall, a, a bug under the rug. First and 10. Hopefully we'll get that kid's name. He's having a good day. Here's Ewing. He's having a great day. And could be having one of the greatest days in the history of the CCS as he rushes forward for about a few more. His magic number before that run was at 109. He needs a little bit over 100, and pretty soon he's going to be getting into the double-digit area. It's, it's, a, it's a fun countdown to watch. He is someone special, and it's neat to know that there's some national attention. He's a fine young man. Uh, any university would be glad to have him uh, if he, you know, chooses to continue his football career, I think they'll be able to find a place for him. There's Ewing over the left side again. They don't just pound it up the middle. They don't just go right. They go left. They go inside. They go outside. It doesn't matter. It's just a heavy dose of Ewing. It's like a, a big Mr. Pickle sandwich. It just it just never ends. And that, you don't want it to end. No, no, no. This, this is uh, bringing the joy. You know, and the Cappuccino is not making any secret about what they're doing. They sent, they sent a little bit of H-back motion that way, and they ran it that way. They're, gonna, they're saying, here we come. Try to stop us. And... Uh, and right now, Mills is doing a pretty good job, although the relentless style is uh, is maybe wearing him down a bit. 36 carries for 191 yards. There's Ewing again trying to get to pay dirt. And he started out at the 19-yard line. Check that, the 13-yard line. And he's able to get inside the 10 down to about the 8-yard line. It's going to bring up a first and goal. And it's going to go for a gain of 7, and he has now officially gone into the single-digit zone. He's at 99 yards remaining to jump into the history books. Well, on that play, he really got behind his pads and met those tacklers and it made it difficult to bring him down on the inside run. There he goes again. He tries right tackle. He cuts it back, and he is hit. Hard at the line, making that snap tackle was Jeff to Zapata. And that's going to go Zapata for another game, tackle. maybe a four or five. And even when you hit him at the line, you look at the yardsticks get moving, and he still picks up three, four, five yards a chunk. That's it. He's dragging kids. And, and that, you know, the same thing about it is, and you said it earlier, guys I remember being on the field with him. As he goes on, if he keeps his eyes focused and keeps training the way he is, he'll keep playing, and people will be able to remember his legacy here on the peninsula. This time they give it to the fullback up the middle. He's close to Pater. Does he get into the zone? No, he doesn't. He's going to be just shy. And the give that time was to Hugo Guterres. 
And it's going to bring up a third and goal. Ball is at the one. Gee, I wonder who they're going to give it to going for touchdown number four on the afternoon. You know, they gave him one playoff. They'll probably go right back to him. That he's, he is the workhorse, so to speak. He had 26 going into the game. He gets the handoff up the middle. He's headed toward the goal line. He's, now he's pushed back, and Mills may have made a wonderful stop at the goal line, and they're going to make him earn it. And they're going to make Coach Hyman make this fourth and goal stop as they attempt to prevent not only Ewing from getting into the zone, but the Cappuccino Mustang team from increasing that lead, which is now at five. Right. You know, this, this situation is uh, with the third quarter with 313. I mean, there's a lot of football left to be played, but, I mean, if you can make a stop here, that's a big, that's a big uh, move. They try the right tackle spot. He dives. He's in. Justin Ewing has his fourth touchdown run of the afternoon. And he's now got 30 TDs on the season here in game number 10. He's averaging three touchdowns a game. He's now carried the ball. That was his 40th carry. So given those two yards, he's at 97 now needed his magic number to break the record. And that puts him exactly at 200 yards on the afternoon. Extra point attempt is up and good by Picasso. And we check the scoreboard. It's now 39-27. Cappuccino with their biggest lead of the afternoon. Well, and this the question is defensively, uh, and I, at the beginning of this second half, is will Mills wear down? Will they be able to sustain the effort that they're going to need to keep tackling? Uh, not just Ewing, but just because of the style of offense that Cappuccino runs, they control the clock and they control the line of scrimmage. And so uh, Mills will have to keep bringing it. The thing that Mills does well is they run a balanced attack. And again, with Coach Mike Krieger and I talked before the game, he indicated that they, they like to throw and pass. We've seen them, when I took a look at some tape before the game, I saw them running multiple formations. They'll run four receivers. They'll run three receivers. They'll run split backs. They'll run shotgun. They'll do all kinds of things offensively. Then, and they and they clearly can move the ball, as we've seen today. So I'm looking forward to them responding right now. There's the kickoff. It's another one of those squid kicks, and it's taken by one of the up backs for Mills, and he's brought down. It's going to be great field position for the Vikings, and that was Gino Carrillo for Mills, and that's one of those situations. Now Mills has got great field position starting off in cap territory, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And with a 12-point lead, is that what you want to do? But if you're Coach Hyman, do you want to let Jeffries break another one on you? That's right. I mean, he's saying, well, shoot, we'll give him the ball, we'll squib it kind of awkwardly. We can't let that ball dribble through the Jeffries because we apparently are not covering kicks very well. I think Mills' average drive start this half has got to be the Cappuccino 30. Herschel Law gives it to Jeffrey, and he's hit low and hard and quickly at the line of scrimmage, and making that hard hit was Calvin Lavulo. Lavulo, the defensive lineman, 5'11", 225-pound senior for the Mustangs, and actually Jeffries was still able to gain a yard. It's going to bring up second and nine. You know, that. so again, Mills uh, getting it going with the run. One of the best ways that they can help their defense is to have a nice offensive drive here and get some more points on the board. Here's a pitch out to Jeffrey. He tries the left side. He gets out to the edge and cuts the corner. Flag comes out. Meanwhile, Jeffries is rushing up near the 20-yard line where he goes out of bounds, and it's a hold against the Vikings. That will bring it back. You see those, those, those flags come out near the line of scrimmage like that, and there's always concern about what might have happened. It seems like there's like some grabbing going on, and uh, that's unfortunate for, for Mills because it would have been a, a first down. So Antonio Jeffries having a fine day running the ball. He certainly is contributing on special teams. He made a nice grab and run. Um, he appears to be the heart and soul of the down. offense for, uh, for Mills today. Caps won the last two Battle of the Strip games, 21-6 and 11 In 10, 28-0 Cap won. Mills last won in 2009. They won 48-41. It was a shootout similar to today. We may have that much 
points scored here. And here's Law with a pass nicely thrown right on target. Intended there for Vozaitis, but well defended by Charles Mack. And Mack really timed that well as the ball reached the receiver and knocked it out. You see here on the replay, and the one thing, and I and I'm, I work the receivers at Aragon, and my, my responsibility uh, on the field, you tell your receiver at the end of the route to work his way back to the ball. And in that case, the, the receiver for Mills didn't do that, and the defender had a chance to get in there and make a play. Oh, here's a pass intercepted right into the hands of the cap defender and running towards the zone is Atik Rashid. And he is tackled from behind out of bounds, but not before he gets inside the 10. Beglitzoff, I believe, was in on that stop. That ball was misthrown. The coverage was misread, and it went right into the hands of Rashid. And he was like, wow, this is, is this my birthday or what? We'll see it on the replay. The thing about that, there's two factors there. Uh, as we see him uh, trucking down the sideline, the quarterback was under pressure, a great deal of pressure was Lal, and he tossed the ball quickly without really reading the play particularly well. I don't think he even saw the linebacker came in and made the, the, the pick. My mistake, the interception was made by Royal Ali. Here's Dowey on the keeper over the right side. He's heading back and he crosses the goal line. Another touchdown for the Mustangs. They have broken this one wide open. Cappuccino starting to pull away now. And, you know, we're finding the game right now at 45-27. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it's starting to be a, a little bit of a battle of attrition for Mills uh, where the constant running game and other factors are starting to weigh a little bit heavily on them. Let's hope that they can sustain their effort and come back get some points on the board in this next possession. Tough break for Mills. They had great field position. They had that big run by Jeffrey, and then the penalty brought them back. And then on the next play, it was the interception by Royal Ali, and he returned it down inside the five. Dowie runs it in on the keeper, and all of a sudden it's 46-27 with a minute 34 left to go here in the third quarter. We mentioned in 2009 it was 48-41. We're already approaching that score. Cappuccino won in 2008, 28-27. It was at Mills in dramatic fashion. Matter of fact, the Vikings were down by a score. Jared Pumau shook loose for a 40-yard run with only 1.5 seconds. You may remember this one, Steve. Left in the game, Coach Moss went for the win with a two-point conversion attempt on the fullback dive by Tavita Latamua. Caps line held strong, and the Mustangs held on for the controversial one point win that was back in 2008. That was an exciting game. I remember you and I remember the call well, and that was an ex an, a barn burner. This game has that potential as well. Uh oh, Sved was going to pick up the bounding ball, and then he slipped on the natural grass. He was able to regain his balance and pounce on that football, but now the field position, which had been averaging way into Cappuccino territory, is now back in. Mills territory is going to start out about the 18-yard line. That's uh, that's where you want it. If you're if you're a cappuccino, that's how you hope that kick works, where the, it kind of bounces around and guys aren't able to get their hands on it because that ball is shaped funny, as we know. And so now Mills has their work cut out for them, but you have to admire their effort and their focus today. They put 27 points up, and they're ready to put some more on right now. Law with the pitch out to Jeffrey. He's going to try the left side of the cap line, and it's not going to be successful. Making the initial hit was Tili Halafifi, and he's able to limit Jeffries to about a two-yard gain. That's going to bring up a second and eight. Right. That, you know, in this, this situation, they really uh, – Mills has got to get not only for the purpose of, 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 of trying to score – but to control the tempo of the game and control the clock, they need a couple first downs. We mentioned Pumau of Mills back in 2008 as Law's pass is slightly overthrown, but a leaping attempt anyways before the incompletion was Beglitzoff, and that's going to bring up a third and nine. And Pumau back in 2008 had a great season for Mills. 945 yards on 133 carries and eight touchdowns, but lost that tough one on senior day. 
in the Battle of the Strip. Nate Newman, a name from the past of Cappuccino, former great running back, was also in that game. And he was San Mateo County's leading rusher back then with 1,800 yards. Kind of looks like a small amount as the pass is complete out to Sved on the right side when you compare Newman's 1,800 yards to what is now close to 2,700 plus for Justin Ewing. It's just it's just night and day, and, 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 and it, we're really seeing something unique, and that's the thing about being right near something like this. You realize, wait a minute, hold it. You blink a couple times, and did I just see that? And, and yeah, they're, they are, they're doing a great job on both sides of the ball, uh, and both clubs are playing hard today. First and 10, Jeffries try the left side once again of the line. And once again, Royal Ali is there to stop him. And he was assisted by George Fafita. And that's going to go for a gain of two, second and eight. Kind of similar to the last two plays. They picked up two, and then they picked up a first down. So Mills trying to march down. And if they can get a score, Steve, they can get back in this game as the third quarter clock is about to run out. They are down by 19, but you know how momentum goes. And they can get right back into it. Yep, scoring sixes so they can catch up in this one. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our underwriters for assisting MCTV in broadcasting local sports in Millbrae. Without their generous support, it would be virtually impossible to produce this kind of programming. So, if you enjoy this show or other MCTV programs, consider becoming an MCTV underwriter. It's a great way to get your business on local television and to support the independent media in the Millbrae community. For more info, contact MCTV at 259-2343 or send an email to info at mctv.tv. Well, Kenny, that we're seeing, we're being treated to an exciting game, and, you know, Mills can close the gap here, and that's what they need to do to stay competitive in this one. Then they need to make some plays right now. And, uh, and there's no reason to believe that they won't. They've been able to do it earlier in the game. Also, you'd expect Cappuccino to be prepared. So... Uh, it, it's it's going to be an interesting chess match down the stretch here for the fourth quarter. It's going to come down to execution, though, offensively and defensively for these clubs. Trying to keep Justin Ewing off the field and maintain control of the ball, but yet they want to move downfield quickly. And here facing a second and eight are the Vikings and their quarterback, Herschel Law. Pass is deflected at the line that drops into a Cappuccino's hands. And running towards the end zone is Sirius Collins. And he's in. Last year's color commentator for the Battle of the Strip. He was up in the booth because of an injury. This season, he's down on the field. And look what I found, Mama. I have got an interception and a pick six. That a person can play football as a defensive lineman for their entire, from they can play in high school and maybe play in college. And heck, if they're really good, maybe play in the pros. And that may never happen. What happened to Collins on that play to have the soft hands and the poise to make that play was exceptional. And he was escorted by a host of his teammates down the field. No one was gonna touch him. We're, they had an offsides there on the PAT attempt, sorry. Uh, we were talking over the official. Uh, so excited about that play. They're going to retry the PAT here, and I hope we'll see a replay of him being uh, convoyed down the sidelines on that pick six. Extra point is short, and it's no good. Check the scoreboard. We got a 52 to 27 ball game with 11:46 remaining here in the fourth quarter. There it is on the replay. The big fella rumbling down the sideline escorted by looks like the entire defense and really um, this is in danger of kind of landsliding a little bit uh, given the score at this time in the game we're only at 11 we're at 11 46 there's almost a full fourth quarter of football to play and and uh, at this point mills has got to play every snap the scoreboard is less important than the next play if you are just tuning in and maybe missed part of the game or perhaps you just want to watch it again, you are in luck. MCTV will be replaying the Battle of the Strip throughout the month of November. 
to find out when the next replay is, simply check the schedule at mctv.tv. And if you prefer to live a little more spontaneously, follow MCTV on Twitter at MCTV underscore Milbray, and perhaps we'll send a tweet when the next replay is about to start. So we have gone to Twitter, MCTV Sports, on the return for Milbray. Check that. In Milbray for Mills High School is Sved. Check that. I'm not even sure that was Sved. I think that was Manuel Ortiz, number 20, on that return for the Vikings. And pretty good field position this time for the Vikes. And they've had a couple tough breaks. That interception thrown over the middle by Herschel Lawl when he kind of misread the defense and then the last time the deflection and the return by Collins and they were in this game. They put up a great fight thus far and all of a sudden you look at the scoreboard, they're down 25 points. There's Jeffrey and he's hitting the backfield and now Cappuccino and making that tackle was that mystery player number 22. But Cappuccino is kind of sensing it. Um, they, they're they just looking to... Um, kind of run the clock out here and, and celebrate their championship. Right, they, they, they were kind of uh, in the position to finish off Mills here, and Mills has got to climb, you know, A, back into the game, but they've got 11 minutes in their football season right now, and they want to play it out, play out the string, play it hard, and play it right. Let's get a couple more scores in this one. From the shotgun, Law fires over the right side, pass is caught. This time it is Sved, and he's at the line of scrimmage, and driven back by three cap defenders. Now they're swarm tackling and they're kind of in a feeding frenzy mode as the Vikings face a third and 13 and Coach Krieger is getting a real feel for the intensity and the endurance and stamina needed to fight through one of these battle of the strip games. That's right, this is a rivalry game and uh, he's coming into this game with a light roster in terms of numbers and, and in terms of physical stature with some of his kids. Fumbled snap by Law. It was kind of low and to his left, and the cookie seems to be crumbling from all ends, and getting credited for the sack for Cappuccino was George Fafita, and that's going to bring up a fourth and about 19. So things went backward on that drive, and pretty much Mills is, is, is just going to have to try to muster up something to, to put up a, a last stand, a last fight here and not prevent the running clock, which could come into play once you get up to 30, 35, 40 points. Right, you know, and, and, and also it's a point of pride uh, to perhaps keep Ewing from uh, eclipsing that CCS rushing mark here when Cap gets the ball back. Cap is going to let this punt bounce it started to take a mills roll and then took a cap roll and is going to be down at the 35 yard line and that's where right, we'll see ewing and we hadn't 35. seen him in a while because of the turnovers so justin ewing will give you a quick update on where justin is at so far he has 40 carries for 200 yards and his magic number stands at 97. nine minutes and 30 seconds left in this ball game well he's gonna if if, if you know and if, if if the if the record is a goal then you'll pretty much see him get it every time also winding this clock down is the goal and the best way to do that is the power running game carry number 41 for ewing he's able to gain probably four more maybe three on that and, and he's a little slow getting up and he started to get up and he's now he's gonna make his way to his feet and they're gonna substitute him out of the game after his 41st carry we are gonna give him four on that it's gonna be second and six the routine so his run. number is at 93 and 204 let's see if he comes back into the game his most carries this season was 44 and he's got that was carry number 41. That 44 was against Gunn, where he gained 494 yards. And there's that uh, new running back into the game for Cappuccino, Rocky Young. And he picked up a nice big chunk there himself. He had a quick burst. He, he, he took off he, and, and, and made a nice play there. Picked up the first. I mean, 
a fresh pair of legs at the running back position and uh, a slightly different slashing style apparently Young has and uh, nice pickup. Rocky Young still in the tailback slot and they give it to Rocky. He goes over the right side, going to look for the edge, but it is cut off nicely by the Mills defensive end there. Number 25 for the Vikes. That was Justin Huang. And that's going to go for no gain, bring up second and 10. And I was looking over in the sideline, and Ewing is standing there near Coach Hyman, and uh, he wasn't allowed to go back in the game. It looked like he wanted to go back into the game on the last play. But now he has entered the game once again, and he's back at the tail back spot, his usual position on second and 10. Ball spotted at the 50 midfield. There's a pitch out to Ewing. He tries to put a stiff arm on the Mills defender, and he's dropped there, maybe even lost a yard or got back to the line of scrimmage. So Ewing wants to keep going. He wants that record. I don't know how much track they're keeping on the sideline like we are. Uh, be pretty hard to, to coach a game and and to keep a magic number in the back of your head. No, I imagine that they're just coaching the game and planning on trying to get through this with the with the W, and not concerned about the record. That that's the way it should be. I note that the uh, that the cap, the uh, Mills team is doing a fantastic job in this drive defending. They've got third and long, third and eleven. They give it to Ewing. He's hit right at the line, stays on his feet, and falls forward near midfield. He may have gained a couple. And at the bottom of the pile, making that initial hit for the Mills Vikings was Gino Carrillo, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So Ewing came back. He lost a yard and may have gained two on that. So the Vikings defense held strong, and then we're talking about them mustering up some strength, and you talked about pride. Well, we saw it there. That's right, you know, and that's what has to happen. You, you know, you don't, you don't look at a scoreboard to determine how you're going to play the next play in a football game. You play football the right way from one snap to the next. And, and so Mills has got, uh, you know, seven minutes or so in the season to, to, to finish off and get this thing going uh, their direction. As a nice goes. high punt by Vaquiz, and it was let bounce by Sved, and Mills will start at the 21. So not a lot of fireworks from the Mustang offense there. Mills will have the ball once again. Here in this 54th Battle of the Strip, you're watching MCTV Sports alongside my broadcast partner, Steve Henderson. I am Kenny Miltz. We do want to thank our statisticians who have done a great job this afternoon. We have Robert Fanua. We have EC and also Elias assisting. And uh, they've done a, a great job of keeping track of, of Ewing and the Mills players, the Mustang players, and, and we thank them kindly. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're keeping you all up to date, and that, keep, that keeps us uh, in the know so we can keep uh, our fan base understanding what's happening in this great tradition game. Robert E.C. and Elias. And this is Robert's second year. He actually worked the statistics for us last year, and they're all students at Taylor Middle School. Robert and E.C. are eighth graders, and Elias is a seventh grader. And they're doing a great job here on MCTV Sports. Second and eight. Vikings with a handoff and a fumble. And Lowell was going to dive on it, but he decided not to. And the Mustang defender dove on it, and he has a recovery. And that was Billy Balderas. So uh, all of a sudden, there's so many players that are making their mark and having memorable plays that will last a lifetime on the defense. They're kind of dream plays. You had Royal Ali. Serious Collins and now Billy Balderas. These kids are making the plays when it counts, and I mean, it, and, it, and it goes both ways. I mean, each team has had a a number of outstanding plays uh, throughout the course of this game. Uh, I was curious on that play on that fumble not to see the the, the quarterback uh, Lal uh, get in there after that ball. That was peculiar. Ewing back into the game, I formation. He gets the handoff up the middle, and gang tackling were the Vikings. Getting him up high was Beglitzoff. He's able to gain forward for two more, and that was carry number 44. So that ties his season high of 44 carries. He's now up to 207 yards. His magic number is at 88. Well, given the field position and the situation, they apparently just subbed for him. They've got uh, looks like they looks like they have 
Rocky Young, Rocky back, Young in the back in the game. At the tailback spot, but they give it to the fullback, and he tries to burst through the line. That's Hugo Gutierrez still on his feet and heading towards the five-yard line. He's going to be inside the 10, but now their coach, Adam Heinemann, is looking to distribute the ball equally, and that may be the afternoon for Justin Ewing. It could be. You know, 44 carries, I mean, that, that's a heck of a load. Uh, you know, you probably only get about uh, 60 snaps of offense uh, in a varsity football game, 60, 65 in some cases. I mean, if he's carried the rock 44 times, they've thrown it a few. He's, he's you know, 85, 90% of the offense as usual. Rocky Young still a tailback, but they give it to the fullback once again. Hugo Gutierrez. And Gutierrez is going to be short of the first down marker and looks like he's only going to be about a yard short. It's going to bring up a fourth and one situation. i to try a field goal here, Steve. You're going to go for it inside the 10. Uh, you know what? It's a, it's a risk-reward type deal. It's a low risk and a high reward. You go for it because if you miss it, you know, you don't pick up the first, you still leave Mills with, uh, you know, 95 yards to goal. So there's really no risk in going for it here. They should do that, and let's see if Mills can defend this. Gutierrez at the fullback spot, and Rocky Young at the halfback. They give it to Gutierrez. He's got the first down and more. He's headed, and he dives in for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Mustangs. There's a flag. Looks like there was a flag right before that play. Maybe somebody moved. I guess we'll pick up the call. So that, uh, fourth. Uh, I didn't see that flag. Well spotted, Steve. And it goes against Cappuccino, so that will nullify the six-yard run. It is a false start, indeed, on the Mustangs. Take them back five yards. And so now they'll be uh, dropped back to about the 12-yard line. Now and it's fourth and it. seven. Yeah, they're still going for still it. Still going for it. And, you know, again, this pins that pin, if they don't make it, it pins Mills deep. It'll be interesting. They give it to Gutierrez again. Plows up the middle, stays on his feet. Up near the first down marker. Making that hit for the Vikings was Jepta Zapata. And let's see where they mark it. It's going to be just about a yard shy. Or is it going to be a first down? They haven't signaled yet. Looks like first down Mills. First down Mills. Okay, so the Vikings defense holds. There you go. Very well done by Mills. So they, they muster up some strength and pride on, on two straight drives here in the fourth quarter with three minutes and 12 seconds left. And, and they, want, they want nothing more than put some more points on the board and not allow Cappuccino to do it. Cappuccino is going to go to 5-0. and oh. They are going to win the PAL Lake Division Championship in 2012, they're going to go 5-0 and in the Lake Division. And 6-4, and here's Antonio Jeffrey on first and 10, getting around the edge, and he's up near the yard marker for a first down. And, and Coach Heinemann, after last year sharing a tri-championship, now has it all to himself. You know, and, and uh, the game plan he put together, uh, playing tough-nosed defense and uh, tackling what's in front of you, that worked. Uh, the, the Ewing, Ewing, and a little bit more Ewing, that worked. The reverse off of the Ewing action. A lot of things have gone well for Cappuccino this afternoon. From the 19-yard line, Vikings on first and 10. They're going to keep it on the ground and keep that clock moving. Checking the bottom of the pile. Didn't catch the ball carrier. It may have been number 41. Jerry Dudum. So Mills and Coach Krieger getting a few substitutions in. Jeffrey's still in, along with Dudum. And Law's going to throw a quick one, deflected again at the line. And making that deflection for the Cappuccino Mustangs was Tilly Halafihi. And Cappuccino now is going to be focusing on the CCS playoffs next week, and they're going to rely on a coin flip to whether they're going to play Monterey or Valley Christian. Nonetheless, they're in. Wow. You know, what a fantastic season. You know, you get a chance. Uh, maybe they bring some Frost Off guys up because their game, their, their season is over, and uh, get a chance to bolster their roster a little bit and continue the week. 
uh, oh, for another week of football playing, playing into November, well into November now. On the play, it's Jeffries who was given a, a great hole by his offensive line in between the tight end and the left tackle, and he burst through for close to another Mills first down, and it is indeed as uh, Jeffries keeps his head in the game and picks up a nice chunky yardage, and the offensive line opened up that hole for him. And we mentioned that uh, that Division Three playoff for Cappuccino and Division Four Sacred Heart Prep will be representing the Peninsula in the Open Division, Terra Nova, along with Sarah. Division One, it'll be Menlo Atherton and Sequoia. And on the play, it's Jeffries again over the left side. He's going to pick up maybe eight more. From Division Two, Aragon and South City will be representing the peninsula. So we've got teams in every division and some talented teams, especially when you talk about Cappuccino. They're pretty dangerous. Who wants to face Justin Ewing? Right. You know, I mean, let's face it, this guy's getting national attention for what he's doing, churning all these yards. So, yeah, I, you know, you better be ready to bring your helmet with you if, if you're going to play Cappuccino in the playoffs. And bring your helmet for Antonio Jeffries, who burst through the line over the right sideline for a huge gain and finally driven out of bounds there. But nice run there by Antonio Jeffries. He's had a fine afternoon, I tell you. He he really uh, has to had his skills on display in all three phases, offensively, defensively, and in special teams. You see it there. He's playing hard through the end of this game, and that's what you want. That's what you want from your leaders. That's what you want from your student athletes, and that's what we're seeing here on both sides of the ball from both teams. 47 seconds left to go in this Battle of the Strip contest. Play action rollout. Lawl off his back foot throws. It's caught. Making the reception for the Vikings. Trying to catch a number there. I believe it was number 13 for Mills. Vozaitis. And we got a penalty and a timeout taken by Mills with 34 seconds left. Nice leaping catch there, Steve. Yeah, it's a wonderful uh, replay by our MCTV crew. They, uh, they uh, rolls against the quarterback, Law, rolls against his natural throwing motion and finds the open receiver. If you would like to purchase a DVD of tonight's game or today's game, if you will, call MCTV at 259-2343. To pick up a DVD that you have ordered, stop by our office at 621 Magnolia Avenue. MCTV is located below the Chikuti Room at City Hall. Make a check or money order for $20 payable to MCTV. And if you want the DVD sent by mail, you can just fill out our form and write a check or money order for $25. And I imagine that the Ewing family and some of the Cappuccino Mustangs wouldn't mind a copy of this one for the archives, a championship and uh, witnessing a, a CCS single season record holder and it's Lawl on second and five. Lost one towards the end zone. Out of the timeout. It's caught by Sped for a touchdown. That's great to see. That's great to see. They they they, they find uh they yeah they find they find Sped uh, deep on the sideline of the left on the fade ball. He's there. Adjust his body to the ball as we see comes down with it in the end zone to get another score on the board for Mills. They made a nice defensive stop with the length of the field, got it in the end zone. That's pride. That's how you finish your season. Gives you something to build on. You said it, Steve. Pride. And they dug down deep. They're fatigued. You know, Ewing's been pounding it, and they had everything go awry for them during that spurt in the third quarter and early in the fourth. Here, Lull going for two. Passes deflected at the line. And, Steve, we've had 85 points here today. Dog on it. I mean, you would, you, uh, you know, I said it earlier, I think folks here, and the neat thing about it, knowing the kids in this game and knowing the community and being here because you care about these kids and these schools, it makes it that much more special. But it, it's an entertaining game. These kids have played pretty well. Now, defensively, okay, they've given up some points. At the same time, it's, it's also great offensive execution at times or, or great individual effort on special teams, as we've seen with some great returns. So it's been entertaining and uh, it's been well played. One more time, we want to give a special thank you to Mr. Pickles Sandwich Shop in Millbrae. They have provided this hungry MCTV crew with sandwiches and other good eats, which is important because sometimes these games can go on for a while and TV folks, well, they get hungry. 
Mr. Pickles offers a large selection of sandwiches, including many that you can find only at Mr. Pickles. You can sample them for yourself by visiting their shop at 405 Broadway in downtown Millbrae. They also accept phone-in and takeout orders. You can call them at 697-1980. And be sure to tell them that MCTV sent you over to Mr. Pickle. So it appears that Justin Ewing is going to be done today. His final numbers are going to end up as follows. 44 carries for 209 yards, and he needs just 88, and he'll probably be able to pick those up next week in the first round of the Central Coast section playoffs. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, 88 yards to him is uh, maybe a first quarter stat. You know, it, uh, you know. It, whereas for most guys, that's a game, and that's a good game for for a running back. For him, uh, he 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 will just be getting started. Uh, whatever team they play will certainly key on him in next week's game. And it'll likely be either Monterey or Valley Christian. Here's a short kick and making the catch and then kneeling down for the Cappuccino Mustangs was Calvin Lavulo. You know, you were talking about the national attention and just a, another factoid about Ewing. He's 12th in the nation in total yards. The leader is from New York, but he's played in 10 games. Ewing had only played in nine before today. As far as players who have played in nine or less games in the country, Ewing is third and that's out of 14,750 high school football teams. He's third in the nation. In the nation. Wow, what a call. What a great fact that you're bringing in there. And what a pleasure and an honor to be here around a player like him and a part to be a part of this tradition here this afternoon. It just really makes it exciting. You punctuate that this uh, experience with that fact he is special and it's unique what we're seeing how about another fact he's fourth in the state of california but leads the running backs in the state of total yards who have played nine games basically he's number one in the state of california in terms of yards per game and that's out of over a thousand sixty seven high school football teams as the last play has taken place on the field in the 54th annual battle of the strip and this edition goes to the cappuccino mustangs who cap off a brilliant 2012 season with the pal lake division championship a victory over mills 52 to 33. mills uh fought valiantly throughout the game kenny i mean there's there's no quit in them they were outstanding and uh, they they have nothing to be ashamed of they they uh more than double their output in wins uh, over the previous year. They got their first league win in three years coming into this game. Uh, they've got something to build on, and I understand they had a pretty good frost off campaign, did Mills, and so I believe that uh, they're heading in the right direction. Cappuccino also has a good frost off team. In fact, in the earlier JV game, final score 36 to nothing, the Mustangs with the victory over the Vikings. The Varsity Vikings end their season at one and four in the Lake Division. They end up three, six, and one overall. A couple of statistics for the Vikings. Antonio Jeffrey ended up with 16 carries for 87 yards. And Himuro, the fullback, three carries for six yards and a touchdown. Lal through the air ended up seven of 19 with a touchdown pass, two interceptions for 77 yards. On the Cappuccino side, we've mentioned it numerous times. Justin Ewing ended up with 44 carries for 209 yards. He scored four touchdowns. Pellegrini, one carry for 25 yards and a score. Young had a carry for 10 yards. Gutierrez, 13 yards on four carries. And Paya Dawe, the quarterback, three carries for 46 yards. Dawe through the air was eight of 11 for 104 yards, his favorite target today was Coates for 30 yards, and it was Lorenzini, three catches for 70 yards. So Steve, your final thoughts on the 54th annual Battle of the Strip. You mentioned how you felt about uh, Mills's effort and the way they dug deep. Cappuccino taking a look at them for a second time this season and viewing them and kind of projecting them next week in the playoffs, they, they are pretty dangerous. They are dangerous, and I mean, you, you have to be concerned if you're their opponent coming up. I know those teams coming into the game, job one, stop the run. And they're gonna have to load the box. They're gonna have to have eight or nine guys in there and play you know, pretty much man on the outside, maybe a single high safety, 
And you know what that does is it gives Cappuccino opportunities to open up their passing game a little bit. They don't throw it much, but when they do take shots, those guys are going to be open. And so I look at them as as a, a likely team to move on uh, in the first round of the CCS playoffs. I mean, whoever they play, they're going to give them uh, a run for their money. And it's exciting to see the PAL uh, generating such fierce opponents uh, and contributing that level of uh, opponent and uh, a team up into the CCS uh, playoffs. Well, that's just going to about do it here from Mills High School on Jim Cox Field. Once again, the final score, 52 to 33. It's the Mustangs with the victory over the Mills Vikings on behalf of our entire MCTV crew and for my partner, Steve Henderson. I am Kenny Milch, and we thank you for listening to MCTV Sports. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.